Okay there, good evening and welcome. My name is Helen Callow. I'm the Senior Coordinator with the Training and Education Department at RDA National Office. Uh, this evening's webinar is going to be all about ASDAN. So um, I have run ASDAN programs successfully um, as an assistant manager at a large RDA centre in the past. Um, and as a regional coach, I've also um, helped people to take on ASDAN um, when we've been going round to visit groups. I will be going through the different programmes that we have on offer uh, and some ideas for for activities and for gathering evidence. This evening, we um, have the chat facility available. If you want to put a question in the chat, then please do that. I'll take all the questions at the end um, because it's just me this evening. So I will go through the presentation, but please pop questions in as they come into your mind. Uh, and I will try to answer them at the end. If I can't answer them straight away, I, I'll get back to you. So don't worry if, uh, and also if your question is, is very specific and maybe just related to an individual at your group, then I'll probably wait and, and respond um, privately to you. So. So that's please pop your questions in the chat box and I'll deal with them all at the end. OK, so I think most people um, who are joining have joined now. So I'm going to uh, share my screen and do a little bit of a presentation all about ASDAN. Let me just get the correct screen. Okay, that should be us now with the correct screen. So as Dan, I'm really passionate about it. It's a great opportunity for our participants to take part in a, a, another um, aspect of horse care and learning. Um, there's so many opportunities. It, it's just another thing that you can add to what you offer to groups um, that come along. So what is ASDAN? It's um, a national education charity they award regulated qualifications and programs and courses. Primarily aimed at the 11 to 25 year old range of young people, particularly those with additional needs. And um, that's, that's what it's specifically set up for with a huge range of courses. The courses that we have mostly on offer throughout RDA are, are these following ones. So the most popular one is Towards Independence Animal Care. So this covers horse riding and stable management. The other course that we offer, Transition Challenge. This is a bit more involved. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about each individual program shortly. Another one that's um, becoming more popular is the short course animal care. Uh, the cost of these, people always ask about the cost. So for each individual learner, with, there is a cost. So you need to buy a booklet. The animal care is £18.50 at the moment. Uh, transition challenge, £22.50, slightly lower price for the sensory only one, £21.50, and the short courses are £20. This includes uh, the booklet, which you need for each learner, the moderation, external moderation by myself, 
um, and the final certificate from ASDAN and, and the postage of the certificate and the booklets out to you. So looking at the first one, Towards Independence Animal Care. So the aim of the Towards Independence booklets is to give a framework of activities um, for young people, young adults, um, to award their um, steps of achievement towards a larger goal. Transition Challenge. This is um, a longer course um, with different curriculum areas, so it ties in really well um, with young people who may not be attending school. Um, their suggested age range is 14 to 16, but you can use it with older um, and younger as well. There is a specific sensory program for learners with um, very profound um, disabilities, which record very small steps of, of achievement, and that might be suitable for some groups. The standard one is the um, introduction and progression, and that covers lots of um, curriculum areas. Even though it says key stage four, it can be used in Scotland and Northern Ireland and Wales as well. Animal care. Um, the short courses um, can be done um, from 10 up to 60 hours of activities. So it might depend on how long you have the learners with you, whether um, whether you take a smaller section of this or, or larger chunks. Um, and it can actually include all types of animals. We've had people who have included um, pigs or whatever animals they might have um, access to um, in their setting. So it doesn't have to just have horses, you can include other animals as well. And these are, these are all really flexible. Um, the activities can be planned together to suit uh, different levels of learners. So who can deliver as done? That's a common question. So as with any RDA session, we need to have a, a qualified coach who oversees the session. Now, individual learners can work one to one with a volunteer under the supervision, the overall supervision of a coach. So um, the coach can be on the yard supervising the activity and volunteers can be working with individuals or small groups of, of learners. We are um, currently in the process of introducing a new certification to allow volunteers to lead unmounted activities and um, without having to go down the full coaching pathway. Um, and as Dan will certainly be an activity that will fall under that. Um, so look out for that. There'll be a webinar coming on that um, next month. What do you need to deliver as done? Okay, well, um, just some, some basic things. So you need a booklet for each person, as we've said, and um, that's part of how they get the certification. So unfortunately, you can't just buy one book for the group and share it. They do need to have one each. Um, and then you need to be fairly organised for this. So um, a folder or a box to, to keep everything in. Access to a, a camera or a phone that you can take pictures on um, is, is really um, crucial because a lot of the evidence um, can be gathered through taking photographs. And then just some general craft supplies, um, depending on the, the age and stage of the learners, what, what you might want to use. Um, and certainly access to some brochures and magazines, which you might um, get volunteers to bring in um, and share with you. That's always useful for a lot of the activities. Other things that are found useful, so um, you might be collecting samples of feed or bedding, so those 
tiny little um, money bags that you get or small food bags and um, sticky labels always handy for for doing activities with with the pony or tack or equipment um, some easy to read pony books um, coloring books or sticker books so just some of your um, standard kind of sticker books that you might get um, uh, in, in a bookshop to use with with young people just depending on the level and access to um, a computer um, with a printer is is useful um, access to the internet just needs to be considered carefully and um, depending um, on whether the young people are, are able to do that safely. So to the animal care one, the booklet itself. Um, inside the booklet we get, oops, we have the list of all the, the topics that, they, that, that the learners can do. So they need um, to, to, to choose the, the six sections out of this. Okay, so we have choosing a pet, housing, feeding and health care, keeping the animal clean, grooming, exercise and play, animal and handler safety, training, holiday care. These are all generic and can apply to any animal that they choose. Um, and then there's some specific ones which relate only to horses. So clothes and equipment, horse grooming, parts of the tack, riding and post riding skills. Um, and they can choose six out of any of those. Um, and there's also an open-ended project that they can choose to do. Um, you, you can design that together. You then um, have uh, some boxes that you have to fill in. Um, so there's a box on e on on e for each section. We have a box which you can describe some more about the activity. Then there's um, a, a comments section um, to add any additional um, comments that you want, want to add. Um, there is a box that says uh, P level. Now you don't need to worry about that unless the school is really keen to include that. Um, that's, that's not necessary. We don't need to do that. Um, there's boxes for the tutors to sign. Um, and then there's a really important box which describes where the evidence is kept. Um, and this is when you need to just be fairly organised and make sure that the pages in the ring binder are, are kept in order and, and numbered um, so that we know where to find them when we come to moderate them. The beauty of the um, chat of the Towards Independence is that they can be done at all different levels. So you might have someone who is profoundly affected by their disability and they are going to be there for the experience. They might not be able to do anything, but they will experience what's happening. And then we have a sensory experience where they're involved through hearing, touch, taste, sight. So this might be, they can experience a farrier visit, they can smell, they can see the smoke, um, they can feel the heat, uh, they can hear the noises, but they, they can't take part in it. Um, for grooming, they might be able to feel the brushes and the pony, but they're not actually able to grip a brush and brush the pony, but they're able to have a sensory experience. Physical help, you, you can help somebody um, to take part. Um, they might need to be holding um, have help holding the brush, but that's absolutely fine. They can do it. Gestural help, they, you might need to point to them um, uh, to give them help. And then spoken and signed help, um, self-explanatory, no help. And there's a really wide spectrum of what no help will look like for some people. It will be, um, you just describe the task and set them off and they go and do it. Um, for others, you'll, you'll need to um, 
be more explicit about the instructions that you give. I'm going to move on to some examples of activities that you can do and ways of recording evidence. So you will, um, the Towards Independence looks quite similar, covers some similar material to the grade tests. So it might be that um, having a test isn't um, appropriate for your learners. So the Towards Independence provides a way of collecting the evidence in, in different, more creative ways. So you might want to use stickers or um, putting labels on a diagram or using magnets all kinds of ways um, and then you can just take a photograph of that. One thing I'd really like to stress um, when you're taking photographs is it's really great to see the photographs as being active so the learner really taking part and showing what they're doing. So here we see a learner placing the sticker on and we see a learner um, we see a learner uh, using the, the labels to, to label the horse. It's really difficult if they're just kind of posed pictures with the finished article um, that, that don't really show the learners taking part. This next one, we've got um, the learner actually cleaning the tack and putting tack away. Um, so this is, these are some more good photographs. Some other ways of evidencing the learning. So um, when, when you send in the portfolios, and we'll talk about that in a minute, there is a form to tick where they have to say that the form, they need to be able to be photocopied and that's part of the moderation process um, so that we can keep a record. So they, they have to do that. There's also um, an optional one where they can allow their material to be used for publicity and training. So some of these um, come from portfolios um, where that's happened. So it's really great if you can encourage um, people to do that so that we have things like this to show. So this comes from a group where they've made up some worksheets um, and they have um, allowed the learners to, to write the name in and then to draw where the tools are used, which is really great um, way to do that. The other worksheet um, on the right, um, the learner isn't having to write anything, they're just having to match things up. Um, so that's um, possibly easier for, for some learners. If you have worksheets where there's writing, you can um, scribe for the learner. They don't have to write all the time. And you could just record um, at the bottom that the learner um, told you the answers and you wrote them down. Just some more active pictures here of learners taking part in different tasks. So not showing um, the completed um, activity but the activity um, as it's happening um, and you would need to add some kind of comments to them so that you could describe what's happening. Another really great example here of um, some photographs showing the task as it's happening and um, going through the task and then a witness statement at the end. So the witness statement is really helpful to fill in what, what the learner has been doing, um, how much she needed help. Um, so some things she did without direction and some things um, she needed to be asked to do. Um, so this is really helpful. You can also see at the very top here that they've marked in all the sections that this is evidence for. So what you'll quite often find is a task is um, able to be used as evidence for several sections. So you don't need to do a separate task for every single section. You might find that once you do a task, it's covered off quite a few different sections and you can just write on what it has covered. The picture um, at the top right here, um, we don't have any kind of explanation 
so I, I know because I take it what's happening, but without any um, commentary on it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't sh show evidence of any learning. So we need to make sure that the photographs have that commentary with them. People have asked whether we can use mechanical horses. Absolutely. OK, you can talk about how they um, learn different skills on them. I've had one group who has used this really successfully with mechanical horses. So that's that's absolutely fine and something that you can talk about. Um, so this here shows um, a typical section from it. So this is the tasks show what the animal will need for housing. For example, kennel, basket, cage, stable. Hopefully our horses are all going to be um, using stables or, or maybe another method. OK, and we can have drawings, diagrams, photographs, even models to um, show evidence of this. Uh, if you do make models, um, just need to take a picture or, or a short video of them, um, that's fine. And then this shows where you can describe the activity. These are optional, these boxes, but it's really great um, to kind of fill out what, what they have been doing. You put the level of support, the skills they've demonstrated and where to find the evidence. OK, and then once it's been verified, that that's filled in as well. At the end of the whole booklet, you do a review. So you talk over um, with the learner what they enjoyed, what went well, um, and, and what their next steps might be. And then they get to sign it. You might see um, reference to the starting out module. Our learners don't need to do that. It, um, you might see um, reference that this is compulsory. It's not for our learners, so don't worry about that. This is the registration form that you need to send back to me with a list of all your learners correctly spelt. Um, so that they can get their certificates. You fill in the group name the education contact. OK, so that's the person that's um, overseeing the programme. Um, the contact the, um, and the assessor can be the same person. So the person who's delivering it. The internal moderator needs to be a different person. So not the person who's delivered the course. So it might be another volunteer or it might be somebody who's got some education experience or interest. Um, if you're not sure about who you can ask, um, then just contact me. You then have to fill in a, another checklist. Um, I'm afraid there is a little bit of paperwork to be done at the end, but I'm always there to help if, if you're not sure. So we just need to fill in the date of the internal moderation, their signature, and then um, we've got some bits where the moderator ha has to sign um, the, the different sections. Um, and then that gets returned to me. I will then request a sample of the booklets. So I won't, if you've got 10 learners, I won't ask for 10 booklets. I'll ask for one or two of the booklets from the group as a sample. But you do need to make sure that the paperwork's filled in for each learner because they could still be requested by ASDA. Transition challenge. This is a bit of a more involved course. OK, there are five different modules, as you can see there, uh, and there are 14 subjects. They need to do eight out of each one to get um, their certificate. They can just do a module and get um, um, recognition for that. Um, but if they do the whole thing, then they get um, the certificate. So this is better for people who are with you for slightly longer term um, as it's fairly involved. Um, 
possibly people on alternative education programmes where you need to provide more evidence um, and provide a structured programme for them. So what you'll find here is you can do projects that cover evidence for several topics. So this was um, a topic on feeding and it covered lots of different things um, in maths. Uh, um, not a pencil in sight, um, but this young person was able to, to work out half of half of so many pounds and half of uh, or kilograms, sorry. Um, and to, to work out how many bags of hay were required for all the horses on the yard, etc. So one uh, topic can give you lots of, of evidence for different modules. Other things that are um, using what's happening in your centre. So this young person was uh, counting up under close supervision the contents of a collecting tin, so adding up all the different amounts of money uh, and then writing a thank you letter and posting that. Um, and if he hadn't had this task then he wouldn't have been very keen on writing a letter, so um, giving them meaningful tasks. This is an example of um, some group working. Um, you can submit things that they've done together as well, as long as there's evidence that everyone's taken part. We do have some other courses available. So um, there are groups using the Towards Independence Work Awareness for young people. Um, so there are um, courses, you can look on the ASDAN website and if there's something that you'd like the look of or if you want to ask me then please do. Uh, there are other short courses, so um, peer tutoring, volunteering and some sports ones um, which, which some groups have done. Um, I'm always at the end of the phone or available by email. You can contact me at any time if you've got any questions about ASDAN. Um, it's, it's not too scary to get involved in. Um, the, especially the towards independence will look very, um, the topics will be very similar to what you've done with proficiency tests. So it's just a different way of um, a different way of giving them um, some different activities that are really meaningful. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my slides now and just have a look at the chat. So just bear with me. Um, I'm just going to briefly look um, through the chat and try to answer some of those questions. Um, okay, so I've got a question here about groups that have local authority funding the places and on average how many hours per week are funded. Well, there are definitely groups which will have service level agreements with councils um, to fund young people coming for places. Um, that's possibly a question to ask on the coaches Facebook page to ask um, that because we wouldn't have that um, detailed information about groups. But yes, there certainly are groups that have can council funding for that. And the average will vary. Um, I know when I did it, um, young people came some two hours a week, some 10 hours a week. Um, it, it really just depends. So thank you for that question. Uh, no additional qualifications required to coach as Dan. It's helpful if some of the people um, involved have a little bit of um, an education in the wider sense background, but it's not essential. As I said before, it needs to be um, an RDA coach who oversees the sessions, but absolutely volunteers can be involved in the delivery and um, look out for the new certification that's coming as well. So RDA um, National is certified as a centre to deliver it, so you don't need additional volunteer qualifications. Uh, what does ASDAN stand for? 
I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I, I probably should have looked that one up. So apologies um, to um, the person who asked that. I'm not sure I can look it up and put it on the Facebook page. Uh, oh, somebody's answered it. Okay. Award Scheme Development and Accreditation Network. I suspect that person might have just Googled it. So well done. Thank you. Um, can the evidence be collected outside of the group as well? E.g. we have a rider with horses at home. Absolutely. So I probably didn't make that clear. So we've had some portfolios that have come in um, when riders have been uh, not been able to be at the centre for a while because of lockdown and they've done some of the stuff at home. Um, so absolutely, if they have horses at home or other animals at home, yes, they can do that. Um, and if you've got a great relationship with the school, hopefully they might be able to do some activities at school as well. Um, in the past, some groups have gone into the school to deliver some of the activities. Um, so, you, you know, you can take grooming kits and feed samples and things like that. And so, yes, absolutely, you can. Um, examples of who recognises the accreditation. So, not specifically. So it is used in a lot of schools. Um, if you ask the school or the council, they should be aware of it. Um, uh, and that's why it's good to put as much kind of evidence and talk about the activities that the learners have done in the book so that it's it's really valuable for them to show people the kinds of qualifications that they have done. Um, uh, so far, I don't seem to have any more questions there. Um, if any of you do have more questions that haven't been answered, um, my email is hcallow at rda.org.uk or you can find that on the Education and ASDAN web page. Um, that will be getting a bit of a, um, an update soon um, with more resources added to it. It does have some of the forms and things that you need. Um, but it will be getting an update over the coming months. So keep checking back for that. If people have any more questions, just contact me or share your experiences on the coaches Facebook page as well. Uh, just checking that there's no more questions. No, no more questions. So thank you so much for coming along this evening. Um, it's great to have you all um, here and hopefully some others will be able to uh, listen to it again um, at another time um, and thank you, thank you for coming along. Okay, 